So spinal stenosis, right. what, what is it and how do you treat it? And what are the symptoms? So spinal stenosis, basically you're gonna, you're gonna see degenerative changes, which can be from the disc, from bone spurs in layman's terms, which we call osteophytes, all these other degenerative processes that occur over many decades in the, in the spine. It's a typical patient. Obviously, it's gonna be an elderly patient. And all of these things compress the neurological structures in the center of the spine. So it's compression of, say, the spinal cord, depending on the level, or the nerve roots down in the lower lumbar spine. Uh, it causes several things. It causes pain in many cases, and it's not really back pain so much as it's lower extremity pain, and it causes weakness when you walk, something called neurogenic claudication. So when I see people moving forward to get out of yes, pain. Yes, the shopping cart sign. So okay. as you lean forward, you are opening up those disc spaces and alleviating the pressure. It's your, it's your subconscious way of getting rid of the pressure on those neurological structures, which allows you to walk better. So by doing what you're doing, it like what? mimics that lean forward move? So, or? so several of the treatments, if you're not a candidate for a big operation or choose not to go down that route, and there are many patients in their 80s have heart problems and other things that prevent them from having a big decompression. So in those patient populations, I have two therapies that are minimally invasive. Uh, they're done in a surgery center or hospital, but I can actually go in and with a very small incision, I can open up that space. In one example, I will use uh, a minimally invasive laminectomy procedure, and I'll debulk some of the thick tissue there. Usually takes me about 25 minutes per level. And the other system that I use is an implant that goes between the spine, and it opens up the spine. So it mimics the shopping cart, but it's permanent. And it takes me about 25 minutes to put it in, and it's about a two centimeter little incision. And these are generally things that uh, interventional pain physician is gonna do? Probably less than 5% of us are trained to do these procedures. These are really advanced, minimally invasive surgical procedures. So these implantable devices mm -hmm. that relieve you know, pressure on the spine, are these people that typically were, are going to uh, fusing? Surgeries? Unfortunately, most of the patients I'm doing this on um, aren't candidates for, for a fusion or choose not to do it, but they were just living with the symptoms, wheelchairs, wheeled walkers, because they can't walk. I mean, is, is that the challenge in medicine? I mean, you, you want to get people early, yes. especially as an interventionalist? Absolutely. Getting them early to avoid medications, things like that? Well, to avoid medications and to, and to avoid the end result, which is deconditioning. You know, now you, you've got a twofold war to fight here. You've got a patient with pain who can't move, all right, so I can restore that in many cases. I can get rid of the pain or the compression of the nerves, but now I've got a severely deconditioned patient. And that's a challenge when you're 85. Well, so that means you've got, you've got muscle atrophy from sitting around and not oh, I moving. See. Okay. Yeah, so now getting in, and getting the muscle mass back in an 85-year-old is, is tough. So you need the muscles and everything to support the spine. Absolutely. And everything else. Yeah. But I mean, the goal is they could slowly get back to maybe movement or some exercise. That's what we do. We do aquatic therapy sometimes. It's easier to rehab these patients in a pool than it is uh, weight bearing on what we call dry land physical therapy. We have to use a lot of modalities to get this, the function back. What do you want people to know, knowing you were going to be here today, mm -hmm. what do you want people to know about an interventional pain physician? Well, I, I think what I want them to know is you don't have to live with all of these problems. You don't have to live in pain. You don't have to live with reduction in function. Uh, you don't have to sit on the couch when you're 80 years old. You can, there are things that we have that can get you back doing things like golfing. I mean, not everybody's going to be skiing, although I have patients that do after I treat them in their late 80s. But I think the, the goal is to get people back and restore their quality of life. You don't have to live this Without way. medications. Without medications. You said people come in with 30 medications. Yes. Sometimes. In some cases, yes. And, and through the working as a team with another medical doctor, yes. many of these people are completely down to maybe two or five or sometimes less. You know, these medications, they're not pain medications necessarily, they're managing their blood pressure and their diabetes and all of these other things that basically result from not moving around tw for 20 years. They okay. gain weight, you know, they started becoming hypertensive, they developed diabetes, et cetera, et cetera. And it was a slow insidious process over two decades to get them on 30 medications. You get them back moving, reduce the pain, restore the function, the weight comes off, you can, you can eliminate a lot of those medications because the underlying, the diabetes goes away in many cases, then goes the hypertension, their blood pressure normalizes, you can drop a lot and of And they're back in the gym. They're back in the gym or they're back on the golf course, they're walking every day, they're climbing, hiking, 